Welcome to this edition of Lakeside Physics. This video will give an introduction to the basics of gravity. Now gravity is something that you have long known about. Here my boys talking about it. Hey, I have a question for you boys. What? Why did that ball fall? Because I let go. Yeah, but why does it go down towards the earth? Because of gravity. Because of gravity? Yeah. What do you, wait, hold on. What do you know about gravity, Evan? The more gravity, the harder it pulls down, the less gravity, the less it pulls down. Let's work to develop a deeper understanding of gravity. In the early 1600s, Kepler developed a set of three laws that described planetary motion. Now these three laws predicted the planetary motion very well, but the question remained as to why these laws worked. It was Newton that came around and said that there was a force of gravity that acted between planetary bodies, and he provided a quantitative relationship that was based on Kepler's data. He called this the law of universal gravitation. So Newton's law of universal gravitation describes the force between any two given masses. So let's consider for a moment what this force might depend on. Take a moment, pause the video, and think about what it might depend on. Well, it makes sense that it depends on the two masses. Bigger the mass, bigger the force. You might also reason that it depends on the distance the two objects are from each other. The further the two objects are away from each other, the smaller that force should be. And we do indeed find that the force of gravity is directly proportional to the mass of each object, m1 and m2, and inversely proportional to the distance between the centers of the masses of the two objects, um, squared. Now, we say it's proportional to, we now can consider that it's actually equal to some constant times m1, m2 over r squared. This constant g is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th. The units are newtons, meters squared over kilograms squared, and it's an experimentally determined constant. One of the most precise measurements of G actually occurred here in Seattle at the University of Washington. Ask Dr. Butler about it. His advisor was the principal researcher on the experiment. Some things to consider. First, mass creates gravity. All masses are attracted to all other masses. That even means that you are attracted to your table mate. The force of gravity is a fairly weak force. The law of universal gravitation only applies to spherically symmetric objects and objects where the distance between them is much greater than the size of the objects themselves. Now note, while this is true and we use gravity all the time on objects like people on the earth, um, we will often be able to approximate objects to be symmetric and approximate distances to be large. So let's do an example problem. The little prince, who has a mass of 5.0 times 10 to the first kilograms, or 50 kilograms, is standing on planet X. Planet X has a mass of 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms and a radius of 6.38 times 10 to the 6th meters. What is the force of gravity acting on the little prince by planet X? Pause the video and go ahead and try to solve for it. All right, so you should have used our universal law of gravity, big G times m1, m2 over r squared. And if you plug this in, you should have gotten 490 newtons, and that would be 490 newtons down towards the planet X acting on the little prince. Note that we just plugged in the radius of planet X as our distance from the center of the little prince and planet X. Why didn't we have to worry about the height of the little prince or try to make it to the center of his mass? Well, if you think about it, the size of the planet is very large, so the small addition of his height or the distance to his center of mass would be very small compared to that total distance. So. I want you to stop for a moment and if you had difficulty with this there are a couple things to consider. First, did you square the distance? Second, did you enter exponent notation correctly? 
And third, one thing to think about doing is to ignore the units when you're trying to solve. They just kind of make things messy. So right now I'm going to go ahead and solve it for you using a virtual calculator and give you a couple of hints about techniques for solving when you have big numbers and really small numbers. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this into our calculators. The first is that you'll want to learn how to use the EE button. So as I go to write 6.67, I'm going to use instead of going times 10 hat negative 11, I'm just going to use exponential, um, or sorry, scientific notation and go second double E. It's going to stick this little E on there. And then I just write whatever my exponent is going to be. So 6.67 E to the minus 11th times 50 times 5.98, again, second e to the 24, divided by 6.38e to the 6th, and then I will just square that radius that uh, distance between the two centers. Notice that this makes it really simple because I don't have to worry about any sort of parentheses. When I use the scientific notation format, it considers this entire number to be one thing. So when I go to square it, it's going to square that entire number. So I hit enter and I do indeed get 400 rounded to 490 newtons. All right, so let's continue our problem. What is the force of gravity acting on planet X by the little prince? Well, according to Newton's third law, the force should have the same magnitude but in the opposite direction. So we should have 490 Newtons upwards acting on planet X. Now let's take little prince and take him and stick him on the planet Earth. What should his weight be? Well, we know that the force of weight is equal to m times little g, so 50 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared gives us 490 newtons. 490 newtons downward? That sounds a little familiar. Hmm, well, we must have done something similar to what's on Earth. And in fact, Surprisingly so, planet X has the same mass and radius of our own planet Earth. So we've been using the force of weight and force of gravity interchangeably. They are equivalent. Imagine placing a box of mass M on a planet of mass M2 and a radius R. Well, the force of weight should be equal to the force of gravity. The force of weight is going to be the mass of the box times little g, and the force of gravity is the big G mass 1 mass 2 over r squared. So we see that the masses cancel out, and little g is actually just equal to our big G, or the, gra the constant, times the mass of our planet divided by the radius of the planet squared. Notice that this provides a method that could be used for finding the mass of the Earth. Let's do one more example problem. A box weighs 24 newtons on planet A. I take it to planet B, which has twice the mass of planet A and twice the radius of planet A. How much does the box weigh on planet B? Pause the video now and try to solve this. Well, the force of gravity on B is going to be equal to big G times the mass of the box times the mass of planet B over the radius of planet B squared. We can replace the mass of B with 2 times the mass of A and replace the radius of B with 2 times the radius of A. Now if I pull out these factors, I end up getting 2 divided by 2 squared times what is the force of gravity on A. So I end up getting one half what the weight of this box was on planet A, or one half of 24, which gives me 12 newtons. Note that we can think about this in terms of proportionality. So if I double the mass, I double the force. If I double the radius, I make the force one quarter the size. The combination of the two results in the force being half of its original. 
That concludes our discussion on gravity. If you have any questions, please let us know. Thanks.